Nerds of a Feather. Astute viewers of this channel will remember me covering a game known as Balthazar's Dream about a year ago. Well, earlier this year it went into full release and I was thinking about doing a quick review, but then the script started getting a bit too long, so I figured, what the hell, I haven't made a longer vid in a while, let's make this a big one. It'll be a stretch, but hey. Also, in hindsight, my Kickstarter showcase on this game was a bit crap, so I think it deserves a bit more. Anyway, Balthazar's Dream for the Uninitiated is a 2D platformer by first-time developer Silo Sive Games. Funded through Kickstarter, the game came out on the 30th of May 2017 for PC only. But I shan't bore you with details, I'll explain everything in the review proper. So get comfy, because now it's time for me to finally kick off one of my announced rebrands by answering the big question. What's so good about... For the benefit of those who haven't seen my Kickstarter showcase of this game, the story is as follows. Balthazar is a dog, and his beloved owner Dustin has recently been hit by an ice cream truck, leaving him in critical condition. In hospital, Balthazar falls asleep on top of Dustin and begins having a seriously trippy dream, in which Dustin has been kidnapped by an entity known as Guild Incarnate, and our titular hero has to rescue him. Along the way, he meets new friends and has a multitude of extremely odd adventures in the world of his dream. It sometimes feels a little drawn out, but I must say it's surprisingly good. Not many platformers of this type have stories this well thought out or well written, not to mention and touching, and its plentiful wackiness lends it a lot of charm too. Mechanics wise, you have your standard 2D platformer controls as per usual, but there are also a few more unique mechanics. A fair number of these revolve around the use of Balthazar's smarts bar, which depletes in certain situations, for instance hanging off ropes and vines, being in the presence of scary things, and being in the absence of Balthazar's ball in level 1. When near something scary, Balthazar is repelled from it like a magnet when his smarts run out, and when not near the ball, he's attracted to it. I think this is a pretty ingenious mechanic, not only does it make for some good gameplay, it also makes Balthazar more than just a character who runs and jumps outside of the story and actually adds some real doggy traits to the doggy character. Hi doggy. The game makes some very clever use of the mechanic as well. On some occasions you actually have to let the smarts bar run out in order to gain extra jump height or distance. On occasion though this can be frustrating to pull off since Balthazar loses all his fear driven momentum the moment he starts recharging his smarts. And this can be pretty deadly when you're in midair above a pit of doom. In fact generally speaking the game has quite a bit of difficulty to it too, especially after level too, and it can sometimes feel a bit artificial, notably level 6 where you'll often find yourself moving much faster than the screen does. There was one thing that actually disappointed me a bit as well. In the Kickstarter demo I really liked the ball mechanic and how it served as both a weapon and an actually pretty fun method of traversing otherwise impassable gaps, however in the full game the ball doesn't actually appear after level 1. That is a bit of a shame, I really did like that mechanic and if it had been used more often perhaps under a different guise it would have made for some pretty fun levels later on in the game. Speaking of mechanics though, something of particular interest in this game is that almost every level introduces a new mechanic, gimmick, or hazard. Level 1 has the ball, level 3 has a sort of maze of doors which you have to navigate, level 4 has a multitude of mechanics and hazard introduced, mushrooms which reverse your controls, ticks which have to be scratched off, and a stick which you can use as a miniature platform, though this only really comes into its own in level 5. Furthermore, level 7 and 8 change the game's format entirely, with level 7 taking place in zero gravity with Balthazar having to move around via a thruster, and levels 8 and 9 being simple space shooters. Level 10 is then all about preventing Dustin being hit by the ice cream truck in the first place. This is actually my favourite out of all the levels, probably due to its unsettling atmosphere and the sense of helplessness you get in the first few attempts. Overall, I quite like how the game is constantly shifting like this. New things to try out and avoid in every level gives the game as a whole a bit more freshness, separating it from the quagmire of platformers clogging up Steam's shelves. However, the game also seems to have a tendency to sort of forget to explain some of these mechanics, thus leaving you to work things out for yourself. For instance, in level 1, you save your game at fire hydrants, but in level 2, this changes to tree stumps, something which the game makes no attempt to tell you. In addition, in level 4, the ticks that I mentioned earlier are removed, according to the game, by scratching your back on walls, but what counts as that isn't really clear. It seems to have something to do with the ticks touching the ground, but it's seemingly quite variable and I've yet to work out exactly what action it is that removes them. One more example would be the stick, which is introduced at the end of that level. It's introduced, and its use is seemingly not explained in the slightest, though in this instance chucking it about a bit reveals its intended use relatively quickly. The game's music is also pretty nice to listen to. It does get repetitive after a while, especially due to the tracks getting reused a couple of times. In fact, I seem to recall one of the tracks is literally just the previous level's track played in reverse. But for the record, it's pretty good and does its job of conveying the feel of each scene really well, especially I might add in level 10. That particular track works works really well with the rest of the level's unsettling aura. Now we started to come to the end of this review, looking back it did turn out to be pretty quick after all, but there's something I'd like to add before I round this whole thing up. As 2D platformers go, I'll admit, I've played better than Balthazar's Dream, but 
and this is a very big but, hehe, <laughs> immature joke, for the very first release by a very tiny little indie company, it is actually really good. A decent 2D platformer with a novel premise, many unique and interesting mechanics, and a pretty good story as well, is a heck of a lot more than one might find in most indie companies' inaugural games, so on that note, I take my hat off to Psilocybe Games' effort. And so, in summary, for what it is, Balthazar's Dream is a game I would say I would recommend, especially if you're a fan of dogs. It may not really be up your alley if difficulty isn't your bag, and it sometimes does have a little difficulty explaining mechanics, but it's certainly a good effort with some really fun gimmicks and hazards, some of which are even tailored to Balthazar's character as a dog, and overall it has its own little brand of wit and charm that makes it at the very least worth a look, in spite of the occasionally frustrating gameplay. As regards length and price, it's about 2 hours long and priced at £10.99p or $14.99, which some may feel is a bit much for the length, but Psilocybe are working on adding additional levels levels to the game with their own new mechanics, so the game may eventually end up being well worth that much. Before I go, I would love to give my thanks to Psilocybe for sending me a key to their game. Thank you guys very much, it means a lot to this little YouTuber. And in return, I'd like to do them a favour by promoting their next game. It's called Artificer, and it's going to be a 2.5D sci-fi survival RPG revolving around crafting magic spells and potions and the like. A bit similar to Don't Starve if you're keen on that. Psilocybe are going to launch a Kickstarter sometime later this month. I'll add it to the end of this video as an end card when it's out, as well as a demo which I'll try and cover as well. If you join their Discord server, link in the description, you'll also be able to chat with the and help with the development. In addition, I also have a number of extra Steam keys for Balthazar's Dream, so I thought I'd do a little giveaway. Comment on this video with some method of contacting you, I'll put your name into the hat, and you'll be notified if you've won a key. Closing date is a week from the upload date of this video, so be quick. I've been Deuterium the Sentient Mattress, and this has been my review of Balthazar's Dream. Thank you all very much for watching, subscribe for more, like and share this video, leave a comment if you like it, leave a comment if you didn't like it, and I'll see you all next time. Ta-ta!